What's going on, everybody? Well, it's finally time to address the cat that has been let out of the bag. So, most recently, about a week ago, in a video by the Watercraft Journal, there was a little bit of a spoiler put out there about a potential new Spark called the Spark X. Now, we knew the Spark was set for a redesign by 2024 since Spark came out in 2014 and there has been no major changes aside from the Trix option, which is just the extendable VTS and also the radical colors. That's pretty much it. The Spark is not much different than the Spark Trix. So a Trix, which is you, what you see right here, this is the only change from 2021 to 2022 was just the colors as far as we know. Specification wise, everything is the same. That PTO that I released recently that is now greased directly off the F was the only change to the machine itself. Now, what we do know moving forward is Spark was set for a redesign by 2024. So one little tidbit of information was sent out there that there is a change. But before we get into that change, let's do a little background on the Spark. The Spark was released in 2014, and everybody pretty much outside of naysayers stated it was going to change the market, and it was going to be a very new type of ski, and it was plastic, which got praise and total hatred. Now, the entire purpose of it being plastic and, uh, and pretty much underpowered was due to the fact that it was going to keep costs down. That was the pretty much the way it was going to get the new markets and change the watercraft market around because a lot of people were not buying new skis at the time and there was no new adopters to it so what the spark was designed to do was attract young people who otherwise wouldn't be on skis all the time to buy one of these things now as an introductory ski being five thousand dollars as you can see here uh at the time this was extremely extremely cheap and i mean 99.5 percent of people can afford this thing with any disposable income so it was easy to get on the water and it was easy to ride and it was easy to take on lakes because it was also super light as well so overall it was just a solid idea by sea to get new people into the market and here's the kicker absolutely nobody had any competition for it at the time so people like me, that's a pretty much an older rider, had this to say about it. It's a feeling I equated to somewhat to the old Yamaha Wave Blaster. In fact, that's also the way I would describe the craft's look, like a futuristic blaster. Now, I disagree with that second part, but the feeling of the Wave Blaster was missed from a lot of people from the 90s era who came around and been like, there is nothing like that anymore. There's no HX. There's no more Wave Blaster, there's no more Wave Blaster 2, there's no more X2, there's nothing we can mess around with that's relatively new for us. So, c decided to come out with something that was a little more exciting for old-time riders in the 90s, and also exciting for people getting into the sport again. Which, I have to say, was a brilliant marketing scheme, right? But now, this ship has sailed. And what we have is just different versions of the same ski over the past eight years, which again is not to say anything negative because nobody else is innovating anything at the moment except Sea-Doo, which is very admirable. With innovation also comes major problems as well, and major problems there will be, especially when taking something plastic and putting it out there with any sort of warranty. One of the main gripes with the plastic was people were cracking them and complaining about the hole being plastic. More often than not, those were just people speculating that it would crack. What did end up happening is when people crashed them into the ground or ran them into something, they ended up cracking. And that would be the design of the Polytech. It really didn't hold up as well as fiberglass, but it made the model super light at 410 to 435 pounds. Anyways... Let's get on to what this video is about now. So on the 10th year anniversary, we were supposed to see a Spark X, X signifying 10. Now, we knew this was going to come out, but we didn't know what they were going to do with it. So they did something extremely reasonable. 
they decided to put a proven motor that was a lot more powerful into the Spark. Now we're talking the motor that we're soon to be seeing in the Sea-Doo Switch. But wait a minute, we've seen this somewhere else. We've actually seen this in the GTI. So if we scroll down on the GTI and we go over to the packages, there's a 90 and a 130. So let's click on the 130 GTI and let's go to engine. What engine is in here? The 1630 ACE, also found on every version of the Sea-Doo Switch. Now, why this is important? Well, this motor is mass produced already. Knowing that Sea-Doo already has this, they decided to try to shove this into this little ski. And yeah, I mean, I guess it worked. They were able to test it out and try it out. And they were quick to find out that they could put one in here and it's extremely fast. Now, how we know this is from the Watercraft Journal. Kevin had released it a little while ago about the Sea Doo Spark, the Sea Doo Spark X, and what they had in store for the future. So let's hop over to this video and really quick go through this. And I'm going to react a little bit. 2023, and I, we literally just covered 2022, which is insane to be talking about 23. This is why I didn't want to but say anything about it, too. It's already on the docket that uh, Spark is due for redesign. So what are they going to do? I don't have them. I don't have dimensions. I don't have sizing. I don't have what changes are being made to the hull shape. But I do know that they are that it is a redesign, and they said quote unquote a ground up redesign. So from the ground all the way up, there is a redesign. It will remain Polytech, which is not a problem um, for me. I Some people, yeah started teasing Martin and I was like, dude, I know there's a Spark X. I I know there's a Spark X. I can't tell you much more than than what I can say right now. And I know that there I physically know there is a Spark X. And where the hell is it? Like we've been asking for it for four years. And <laughs> I started I started laughing because I was like, guys, well, I'm like, Mar I'm like, Martin, you've got to give me this damn thing. Where is it? And he says, well, what? He, he starts prodding me. He goes, well, what do you think it's going to be? Hey, what do you think it is? And Greg and I immediately go, well, it's going to be the H. It's going to be the Turbo H motor that's out of the sea dude. So I initially thought that as well, but I know that that's not going to be the case because of what, you know, Kevin goes over after this, which... I'll just save you the trouble, but basically it's the turbo is too hot and it's also not necessarily for the piping. It's it's hard to route, and when it's hard to route, it could also cause some damage to the hole when it gets so hot as well. So uh, what they decided to do instead, kind of what I just went over, as Kevin points out here, 1955, is that there's a well, 1630 motor in it. You know what engine's in the switch, right? I go, well, the 1630. And he says, well, how much horsepower does it make? I said, the 1630 makes 170 horse, 130 horse. Right? Choice of 130, 170 horse. And also 100 as well, if you count the switch, but that's just detuned. All the, all the different horsepowers are based on tune. That is it. And he goes, well, there's no 130 in the switch. It's a 100. And I go, yeah. And he goes, Okay. And I said, are you telling me the 1630 fits in the in the Spark? And he goes, yeah. He says, we had to change. He goes, there's, there's one part where it's a little tight in the clearances that we had to change on the deck to fit a 1630 Ace motor. So you can see there is excitement for this reason to put a 1630 in the Ace motor. Now, as he goes on to say, just so this doesn't keep going on and rambling... But basically, uh, we'll get over to the speed of what this was with uh, 170 horsepower. So if we move over to 2235, close enough. It's gonna be it's gonna be brutal. So he says, "Okay, we got a 1630 motor with 170 horse in it." And he goes, "But we got a problem." And I go, "What's the problem?" And he says, "Well, the problem is it, he says this is a problem." And I'm dying. I'm laughing my head off. They're thinking we are telling dirty jokes at the end of the table. And he says, 
It goes 63 miles an hour with me on it. So, on top of this, Martin, as he goes on to say, is 256.5. <laughs> so, for somebody like me who's 190, uh, yeah, that's going to be a 65 mile an hour ski at the least. So, you know, we, we know why there's no turbo because of the different problems it arises with heat piping and all that good stuff and also forced induction reliability so why not put a more reliable engine in the ski so there's one problem that i see with a spark that's going to have you know a 1630 motor in it is it's an additional 100 pounds at the very least also it takes what's exciting about the spark away from it now would i want to drive one? Oh yeah definitely why would I want to drive one? Because it's not going to be 400 pounds anymore, and uh, it's going to be 500 pounds, but that's the same weight as the Yamaha EXR plus an additional X amount of horsepower, but it's in a Polytech hole. And the reason why Polytech is important is because now, even though it's lighter than fiberglass, it's a really rough ride. You're going to have a 1630 motor with a rough ride. Now, 99.9% .9 of people who are going to get on this thing are going to drive it. And they're going to go, holy crap. But the other 0.1% are going to go, what else can we do about this? Us idiots are going to contact Riva or purchase a license and literally tune this thing up to the moon. It's going to be 170, 180 plus horsepower and it's going to be stupid in a 500 pound ski now is that stupid fun yes but top speed never concerned me it was always the whole shot will the whole shot be amazing yeah you betcha because it's naturally aspirated it's no longer turbocharged and you're looking at with the tune immediate torque out of the water that thing is going to rock it but again you lose that wave blaster feel unfortunately when you put too much weight in so will it be fun yeah will a lot of people buy this oh yeah there's this thing is going to be huge especially if they're able to sell this for under eight grand or nine grand this is going to be a top best seller for like five years it's also going to receive immense amount of hate because of the polytech hole and that's one thing that we did want to go over as well is this more suited for Polytech 2, which is just fiberglass stringers? Or is this something that should be redesigned into a fiberglass mold? Now, the GTI also, even though it is Polytech, uh, it is a much larger ski. And it also has the ability to eat the waves up a lot better than the Spark because of the weight of the machine itself. Now, if we go into dimensions, this is like 740 pounds this is very heavy compared so we have to keep in mind putting a 1630 ace motor in a tiny machine like the spark is going to cause a whole riot worth of things that are either going to go wrong or go fun and as long as they don't redesign the hole too much or, or you know mess with this especially with the drag this thing is going to be an absolute race machine which covers the remainder of the people who want to go extremely fast on a light machine. Is it for me? No. Would I want to drive one? Yes, I want to test one out big time. Putting 170 horsepower to 200 horsepower in a 500 pound ski is going to be absurdly fun and absurdly dangerous. And I can't wait to get one on the water. Let me know what you think about the 130 let's call it cons uh, conservatively, 130 horsepower Sea-Doo Spark. And let me know what you think about this thing. Comment, like, and subscribe for more content. And let's discuss this monster.